In this Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak expansion preview, we'll be discussing the private presentation by Capcom that allowed us to enjoy two monster hunts and check out new features of the upcoming DLC. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak will release on June 30th for Switch and PC. The Monster Hunter Rise presentation began by introducing to us the new Switch skills. Each of the 14 weapon types have three sets of two moves that can be managed in the Switch skills menu and saved to sets. You can now skill swap to register up to five switch skills to each blue and red swap scrolls that are used when weapons are drawn or sheet. If you're attacked while performing a skill swap, you'll also get the option to do a swap evade, giving you a convenient evasive maneuver separate from your regular roll. The expansion introduces Master Rank that not only brings new and challenging monsters, but also adds new behaviors and abilities to the base game monsters. Examples of this include the Aknossum's new somersault combo and the Tigrex's new bite into spin attack follow-up. The players in the preview were already Master Rank 4, and the first quest we witnessed was Howling Moon, with a team of four ready to take on the new monster, Luna Garon. This quest takes place in a new locale called Citadel that looks a lot more western than the previous locales of Rise. Expect to see an abandoned fortress in the distance while you traverse the Citadel's forest, and even find some icy peaks with a presentation promising the area to be expansive and full of secrets to explore and discover. The hunt introduced a new feature right away, the Golden Wirebug. This unique creature will increase the maximum number of drops obtained from Wyvern Riding attacks. This can be a great asset, so be on the lookout for them as you explore. There is also another new Wirebug, the Ruby Wirebug, which will increase the damage done by your Mounted Punisher, which is the special attack you can perform on another monster when you have filled the gauge on the monster you're riding. Having either of these new Wirebugs will make it easier for you to get a monster into the Wyvern Riding state, and they make your Wirebug gauge recover faster. It's also important to note that with Sunbreak, you can now opt to remain on foot when a monster is in a rideable state, rather than being forced to mount it or waste the free DPS time. Another small quality of life feature is that wall running no longer requires a wire bug, saving you the trouble when you want to traverse vertically. In addition, Sunbreak introduces new endemic life such as the Marionette Spider. Where the base game had the Puppet Spider and allowed you to hold down a monster, the Marionette Spider will instead pull a monster at your command, making it easy to pull down a flying monster or knock a monster against a wall for easy knockdown points. The marionette can only be used once, but it will surely be very helpful in new and challenging master rank hunts. Players will also arrive at the new outpost and encounter the familiar setup of services and NPCs, but immediately notice a significant design change away from the eastern feel of Kimura Village. Elgato Outpost is closer in design to Monster Hunter World or titles with a more western look. You can still expect to eat plenty of dango, however, as the Kimura Tea Shop has set up a branch in town and is offering to let you pick three dango per stick and customize your bonuses within. There's also the usual easy request of items such as well done steak. Other new NPCs include a Boro who replaces Kagero the merchant in providing you useful materials and the ability to craft health potions and antidotes. The smithy is Manele who studied under Hammond the blacksmith and is ready to provide you with master rank weapons and armor with new elements, abilities, increased rarity, and purple sharpness. Of course, there's Buddy Smith Biss to take care of your Palamutes and Palicos. Lastly, there's Chiche who offers Master Rank difficulty quests and Master Arlo, a rough but kind-hearted fellow in charge of arena quests. The first hunt pitches us against the Lunagaran, a fanged wyvern with a lapis lazuli coat that looks like a cross between Toby Kadachi and an Odegaran. The Lunagaran is one of the three lords making its series debut with this expansion and has an organ that allows it to regulate its body temperature by taking in air, which cools it and allows it to tolerate long migrations, giving it a wide range of habitats to choose from. This monster is known by another name, Ice Wolf Dragon, and will transform an enraged to coat its long claws and sharp tail in blade-like ice, attacking with quick and deadly precision by standing on its hind legs. Lunagaron's moveset has some shared with Odegron, but the use of its claws as blades in quick succession sets it apart and will need to be learned as its own unique moveset by experienced players. Next up we meet Garangulm, a brand new monster and one of the three lords making its series debut with the expansion. This seems to be a passive monster that only attacks when provoked. Looking somewhat like a Barith, Garangulm will use moss on its left arm and magma on its right arm to use both water and fire attacks on its targets. Its thickly armored body makes it a highly resistant enemy and its armor, the Garangulm set, is said to be only usable by those who worship the forest. There are also new subspecies coming with the expansion, and Capcom briefly mentioned the Blood Orange Bishaden, who flings numerous explosive pine combs at hunters that they can detonate with various attacks. Other announced subspecies include the Aurora Somnicanth, a new subspecies of Somnicanth that rather than having the ability to put hunters to sleep, this version of the Leviathan is able to harness the freezing cold air it emits to slide quickly across the arena and freeze unsuspecting hunters where they stand. 
The trailer shows it is able to harness a powerful freezing breath attack similar to Velcana's Ice Beam attack. And the Magma Almudrin, a novel fire-based subspecies of the Almudrin, found in the lava caverns. It is able to enter a heated state after burrowing underground, giving it access to magma attacks. As with regular Almudrin, hunters should always be wary of the Magma Almudrin's deadly tail. There are several returning monsters being introduced into Rise with the Sunbreak expansion, including Shogun Cenotar, Astalos, and Seregios. The Monster Hunter Rise preview included a quest to hunt a Seregios during a special follower hunt for Master Arlo. Follower hunts are a new type of solo quest that allows the player to be joined by an NPC and their furry companions. Doing these quests deepens your bond with story characters, but the effect of such actions is not yet known. Presumably, we may see specific NPC storylines develop if we complete their challenges or be able to access special reward items as well. The Seregios hunt is a challenging encounter set in sandy plains. Seregios are flying dragons with blade-sharp scales that can be thrown at enemies and inflict devastating bleed. As hostile as they are agile, they mix the movesets of other flying monsters with the agility and tenacity of a Tigrex, so players will enjoy a good challenge learning the moveset and patterns of these hunts. Final thoughts. Although a short presentation in essence just giving us a glimpse of the new monsters and a few new sets of armor and weapons, it was enough to get me excited for the game. I really enjoyed the combat fluidity of Monster Hunter Rise, and it was actually our 2021 game of the year. Knowing the expansion will bring along Master Rank and give existing monsters new moves and tricks will refresh the entire game, but I am most excited to see the new armors, weapons, and skills that I'll be able to use, and new systems that are probably keeping under wraps. I'm already planning my Rare 12 weapons and drooling over the Purple Sharpness Rare 9 Axe I saw. So what are you most excited about? Will you be getting Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak? Have you been waiting for the expansion to buy as a bundle? Let us know in the comments below.